But what about the same thing with our favorite drum software? Let's say we've got our host sequencer running our favorite plug-in drum software and we want to use Spark to trigger that drum software and to write notes to our host sequencer's tracks for that third-party drum software. What about doing that? And then further on from that, could we also use Spark's internal pattern sequencer to write patterns whilst triggering our favorite third-party drum software? Well, let's look at all that now. And now we're going to have the sequencer running as well. So we want to have Spark running standalone. We're not running Spark as a plugin to try this. Okay, this is using Spark to trigger a third-party drum software. So we have our sequencer open, and on the sequencer track, we put our favorite drum plugin software, and then we have Spark open standalone. And then we set everything up on Spark, the same as for triggering the hardware. Just follow how I set up Spark to trigger the hardware. Okay, and once we've set all that, um, Spark has to be open, but we don't need it on screen anymore, so we can drag it off where we like. Okay, next we open our sequencer, and I'm using Logic, here it is. Now, if you're using Cubase or Sonar or one of the other sequencers, those sequencers all list their MIDI in ports, so as long as you've got the right MIDI port selected for the Spark, everything should now work. You should just bash on the pads and your third-party drum software should begin triggering. But with Logic, there's an extra step that we have to do. We go to Window, Environment, and this pops up. Now, when, it, when this Environment window pops up, yours might look like this. Okay, whatever is showing in this grey window, go to this drop-down list here, just now look, and choose Clicks and Ports, and it'll look like that. Okay, now the next thing we want to do New Instrument. Boom. This icon appears called Instrument. Drag it down there. Now the next thing is look up here on this grey block with these little white bumps sticking out all down the side. And it's terribly fiddly to see, but basically with the left mouse we get the one, two, the third little white bump. Left click and hold down and drag this lead away with the left mouse. Keep dragging, drag, 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 and drag it down to the instrument snap it to the instrument and let go. Boom. And what we've done now is we've connected the Spark Private In, a little third plug down from Sun, to this instrument. That's it. Close it. Now it's all working. <coughs> okay, but it should work in Logic, uh, sorry, Cubo Sonar, etc., without having to do that fix, obviously. Okay, now we've got all the pads. Second bank, 9 to 16. Okay, and it's these second bank pads that you're more likely to change the MIDI note numbers for to access the percussion instruments in your kit that you want. The earlier ones will probably be right with general MIDI for the kick, snare, hats, toms, etc. Okay, so brilliant. It works, yay! We can, we can trigger our, our third party favourite drum software, and sure enough, look at the meter here in Logic. It is triggering the EXS kit. So the next thing is, can we write patterns into our host sequencer for that instrument from Spark? So let's try it. Uh, put the metronome on. One, two, three, four. Two, three. Okay, it's working. Got some metronome. Here we go. I'm going to record in a basic beat. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's done. There's my kick and snare. I'll just quantize that look. One, two, three, four. Now hats and kick and snare in the same pattern look. Wonderful. Lastly, let's go to the next bank of pads. I'm going to put in a little pattern with this bongo thing. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Kick, snare, hats, and a tom, a bongo. All played in with beautiful velocity sensitivity. Wonderful, it works. So that's the first thing. We can use Spark as a master keyboard to play in our beats for our favorite drum plug-in software, record the notes onto the track in our sequencer. Wonderful. Trust me, it's so much nicer playing these, you know. It's so much nicer to play the pads than MIDI keys. Okay, that works. 
Wonderful. Okay, let's try next thing. Can we use Spark's internal sequencer and write create beats in the internal sequencer whilst triggering the third-party drum software? Now, let's see about. There is one thing here, which is remember, Spark is always running in the background. We have to have Spark open all the time to, to be able to use the MIDI driver and to make sure that the pads are playing the right MIDI note numbers, etc. Right? It's it's in the background. It's you know you just have it wherever you want on the screen. But it's running and there's, it doesn't make any sounds, which means we can have the volume turned up and we can use the metronome. <laughs> so look, select metronome, <laughs> and we can adjust obviously the volume of the metronome to whatever we want. You know, so we can have metronome audio coming from Spark. But when we trigger and play patterns into the, its internal sequencer, we'll be triggering the software drums. So we could do TR style sequencing. I'll choose the kick. I'll put in a 4 on the floor, but it, it's going to be at a default note velocity of 64, which is not very good for this acoustic kit. Uh, and it sounds like this. I'll actually take the metronome off for this. See, it's not very loud, is it? Because it's only putting in very low velocity notes. But I can show you now that accent works. Look, I'll put an accent on the first kick. Listen to that. So the accent is working 100%. OK, so I'm going to rather play in my drums recording it real time instead, and I do want the metronome now. So here we go, I'm going to record in a basic beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Bit of hi-hat. Bit of percussion drum, this one here, the little bongo. Bit of tom, maybe. Yeah, fantastic. It works. Absolutely works. So there you go. We can use Spark's wonderful pads to write patterns to our host sequencer tracks for our favourite third-party drum software. And we can even write patterns to Spark's internal sequencer for our favourite third-party drum software. And of course, any of those patterns we write to Spark's internal sequencer, they all get saved when we save the Spark project, and then we can use those patterns in the future by simply exporting them out of Spark as MIDI files.